no matter what you do, no matter how many marches we have, the police still abuse us. They still lock us up and have sex with us to, for our freedom. Or there will be a gang of guys deciding, okay, tonight we're doing this one. Mm -hmm. And they would gang rape you so brutally that you won't stand up for maybe a month. Or, like for me, it was about almost eight months I couldn't stand up. In South Africa, sex work is illegal which puts women like Nicole Adams more at risk of abuse and sexually transmitted diseases such as HIV. I'm a sex worker, proud and radical sex worker, feminist as well as lobbyist for sweet. My eldest daughter is my stepfather's child, my middle one, my uncles, and the last one is gang rape. But that didn't stop me from going and standing on the street and selling my, myself for, for sex because in the end of the day it brought, it brought food on my table, it brought food on, uh, into my baby's tummies and it put them in school. Sex workers are often vulnerable to sexual violence from clients and even if they do go to the police they may experience further violence. There is family men that puts their wives up standing on the street and that hurts me. It tears my heart apart that that woman can 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 go through so much pain just to prove to a man that that they loved him, or to prove to a person, or like in the community as a sex worker, proving that I, even though you guys hate me, I'm still human, I'm still a person inside of me, I'm still breathing. Exposure to HIV amongst women who experience sexual violence may be up to three times higher than those who have not. Sex workers living with HIV face further challenges in accessing health care. How me being a lesbian and being a sex worker and still loving the life I have been loving makes me more vulnerable um, to HIV. It is, I think most of all, sometimes you do get the clients that, wow, this is a lot of money this guy is offering you, but he doesn't want to con them. So in the end of the day, it comes down to my choice if I'm going to take it. But what if, like for example, I don't, I don't have food, maybe my cupboard. I have to take it because why? It's going to bring me money in. We are not allowed to even in the certain hospitals because of our occupation, and we get judged by nurses. They don't want to help us. They just don't. They are horrible to us. South Africa reportedly has 153,000 sex workers, according to the Sex Workers Education and Advocacy Task Force, known as SWIT, which is the country's leading sex worker human rights organization. Um, SWIT came into my life, say, about four to five years ago, where they've really mentally, they've helped me get, get back my dignity as a woman. First of all, they've brought back the woman inside of me that that never got loved, never got appreciated, never even got attention. SWET is um, a human rights organization, a cutting edge organization which deals with uh, sex worker human rights as they are a marginalized group. So we are there to say we are a home away from home for sex workers, a place where they can come and be themselves and be free and we're here to offer our service. We do lobbying, we lobby the government, we lobby the councillors around in our areas so that our violence can stop against us. There is hope, there is a voice, there is someone out there like Sweet. So our main focus is to make sure that sex work is decriminalized in South Africa through advocating for sex workers' rights. Hoping to achieve with my lobbying with Sweet, I'm hoping to um, be one of the people that's going to sit in Parliament one day with all the ward councillors and all the, the, the MPs that I've, I've interviewed and be one of the Parliament. To support Nicole in her lobbying, visit the SWET website and sign the petition to decriminalize sex work.